Welcome back everybody. Now today I'm taking a look at four gadgets that were sent to me unsolicited to see if they really work. That's today's video. Now, if you're new to my channel, I review weird products from Amazon, ASEAN TV products, and other strange gadgets, including this, which is the Burger Buddy, which was the first item sent to me unsolicited. That's the first item in today's video. Let's take a look at the Burger Buddy. This is supposed to be a mess-free burger experience. Looks like we've got a three-pack. It's, it's uh, expandable, hygienic, it uses less napkins. Put your burger in there or other rounded items like donut or bagel. Dishwasher safe, available in four colors. I think it's $8 for one or $17 for four. This is currently on Indiegogo. I have not seen it on Amazon, although I'm sure it'll probably eventually be there. It reminds me a little bit of this item that I reviewed last year, which is the burger holder. Now this is, the burger buddy is flexible. It can expand due to its flexibility. The burger holder, it's hard, but it also expands because it comes in two parts. Now, one thing that I had a problem with the, the burger holder was that once you got to the bottom, it was kind of like a bowl. They say that when you get to the bottom of this one, you can just kind of push it up so you still don't have to touch it. So that would be a nice change. So uh, let's go out to the car and see how it goes. Field test time for the Burger Buddy. Now, it seems like only yesterday I did this burger holder, which, as I said before, is a, similar, but this is hard plastic. This is not. The problem I had with this one was once I got down to the bottom, I really had to just kind of use my hands to kind of defeat the purpose. I mean, it did collect a lot of the drippings, but I still had to use my hands. I should say that I, I, I this is the second time I'm actually filming this. Uh, last week I came here to In-N-Out and I, I started filming myself using this. I got almost to the end and I had a camera problem. And my, all my footage was lost. So I, I guess the good news is I get to eat In-N-Out a second time and not feel guilty about it. The other good news is that because I have to do it again, I did take this home and wash it and I realized that washing all these little cracks and crevices is not quite that easy. I had to get a brush and kind of get in there. This one has more of a smooth bottom, so it wasn't that hard. This one, all those little crevices were a little bit difficult to clean, but it can go in the dishwasher. I didn't try it in there, I tried it by hand. But with that in mind, let's try an iconic classic in and out Burger. Now they already serve in and out in this nice package. So if you're in an eating an out Burger, you really don't need something like this. But let's just pretend that you didn't get an in out Burger and it doesn't have this nice wrapping on it. Take it out of here and transfer it to the Burger Buddy. It's transferred to the Burger Buddy. My second, and I usually only eat in and out about once a month, maybe. It's, it, but I get to eat it twice in, uh, twice in a week, so I'm not too upset about losing that footage, I guess. So I'm gonna start eating it and I'll give you any observations I have. Now the first part shouldn't be hard because all this is just kind of sticking up. That shouldn't, that shouldn't really cause any problems. It's when you get down to this area is what I'm really kind of curious about. Although this is my second test with it, so I already kind of know what to expect. Well, let's get started munching on the in and out Something else I noticed is there's definitely a, a bigger dip right here than you had with the, uh, the burger holder, which uh, I guess makes sense. So I guess that's a better design. It is flexible. You could fit a pretty big burger in there. You could fit a pretty big burger in here too. Oh, I'm, I'm actually seeing an argument back there. Someone just flipped someone off. Ooh, I get a free show with my meal today. I can't go wrong. So hope they don't come over here and interrupt my, my delicious sandwich. I'm getting to the point now where if I bite too much, I'm gonna hit that. So I guess I can kind of angle it, I guess. I don't know what's really the best way to do it. They say you can push it up from the bottom, but I think I'm just gonna angle it for right now. Hey, I pulled out my Sauce Moto dip clip for my ketchup. If you uh, didn't see that review, I'll, uh, I'll link it below. All right, I'm now to the point where I really can't take any more bites without doing something. So I'm gonna try pushing up from the bottom like they showed, I guess. I guess that'll work. Mm, not much easier. I'm just gonna use my hand. I, I don't, it seems like it's too much work to try to push from the bottom because it's like, you're just, it's, it pushes it apart, the bread comes apart. I don't know, this is a mess. Let me just, let me use my hands. It is still collecting any of the drippings though. It's keeping my shirt clean which is good because this is my Waluigi shirt. I don't want to get that messed up. All right, last couple of bites. I got to use my hand. I'm not sure there's a big difference between the two of these, even though there's a slightly different design. I also don't think that once you get to the bottom, you have much advantage, but it, it does collect all the stuff that would have dropped out 
it's good for that. I'm still not sure that a device like this is necessary. There might be instances, say you, you wear white for work and you want to eat a burger in your car or something, maybe. You can always come up with a scenario where someone would want to use something like that. But I think someone like me, I, I don't think I would use it. In fact, I've had this for at least a year now. I've never, re I, it's been in my car, I never reached for it. So I, I think that, I think that the, the burger holder and the burger buddy are going to be box mates in my garage pretty soon. I don't, not that it doesn't work. It, not that it doesn't work. It's just, I'm not sure I find it very useful, but I'm glad I tried it. My sauce moto dip clip is something I occasionally reach for. It, it's also probably not very necessary, but it's still kind of fun to use. One more thing to consider is that once you're done eating, then you kind of have to, this kind of dirty thing in your car and you have to leave it in there until you're done. So hopefully you're not eating something that has too much liquid that could get spilled or it's too stinky and might stink your car up, but you have to kind of leave this dirty thing in your car the rest of the day until you clean it. Depending on your situation, that may or may not be a problem. Maybe the Burger Buddy can be used for dogs too. Maybe she's not impressed. She's licking it. Get the burger. Now she's nibbling it. Now she's wagging her tail. <laughs> she doesn't know what to do. Oh. So in the end, it's kind of a fun little gadget. We'll actually end up getting mass appeal. I'm kind of skeptical, but we'll see how it goes. This is the Groove Belt. Let's take a closer look. Features of the Groove Belt are that it does not need to be adjusted. Once you adjust it once, it does not need to be adjusted. They say it's somewhat stretchy, but not highly stretchy. That does seem to be the case. This features magnets to keep it in place. So you can take it off with one hand and it has, they say, a surprisingly oddly satisfying sound when it snaps back together. I guess. The cost of this belt is about 50 to 55 bucks depending on the design. They call it the best belt in the world. Let's find out. All right, I've watched the instructional videos. I've, I've read over everything I can about this. Let's give it a shot and see how it works. Now they say you can, you can take it on, off with one hand. It's, I find it a little bit difficult. In fact, the first time I saw it, I was, I was thinking you lift it up. You don't lift it up because it doesn't, it doesn't lift. Underneath here, this has to kind of push in and go up. You can do it with one hand, but it, it would be a little bit difficult, I think. At least at first, maybe after a while it wouldn't be. But you do have the magnetic clasp here which is kind of satisfying. Maybe not quite as satisfying as they want you to believe in their commercials, but it is somewhat satisfying. Actually, let me take my track line belt off first. Core track line belt, very happy with this one. It's a ratchet type belt. Very easy to adjust. Lever to take it off, very simple. It's a little bit loose. I should probably just adjust it a tiny bit. It's very easy to latch. That's, that's one nice thing about it. But if, I'm, if I need to tighten it, they say to pull this, that's, that's just not pulling. I, I feel like I have to push this up through there. I can't, I can't pull either way. I don't know what they're talking about, just pulling it. Even though I feel like the adjustment's a little bit more difficult than they say it is, they say you only have to adjust it once, so maybe that's not really a big deal if you get it right the first time. Yeah, this is not as easy to adjust as a ratchet belt. I know they said you just pull on this, to tighten it. That is not tightening. It's not moving. It seems actually more difficult than a regular belt to adjust it. All right, now I feel like I've got it the right size. It's just tight enough to hold my pants up without being too tight. I can't say I was a fan of the adjustment. It didn't seem nearly as easy as they made it look, but if, if they only have to adjust it once ever, then that really may not be a big deal. So let me go out in, in the field and give it a real world test. All right, quick update on the Groove Belt. I just ate a little while ago and I've been in my car. Uh, I do realize that it's, it's pretty comfortable uh, after eating because usually that's when your belt is the most uncomfortable and you have to adjust it. I don't have to adjust it because it is stretchy. Not so stretchy that it still doesn't hold my pants up, but it's stretchy enough that when after I've eaten a big meal, it's still actually doing its job. So I think that I'm definitely getting used to it as far as that goes. I'm still not convinced it's as easy to adjust as I would like. Uh, I haven't quite got used to it yet, but I've been wearing it for about four or five days now. I'm going to keep wearing it. But I do appreciate the fact that in the car, after a big meal, it's not uncomfortable. A lot of belts are. This one's not. When I was doing my original adjustments, I was pulling from this side of the belt. On their instructional video, they're pulling from that side of the belt. 
I've tried it both ways, it doesn't really matter. It's still difficult, doesn't matter which side I pull from, whether it's that side of the strap or the other. No matter what angle I pull at, no matter how far back I pull, it's just not easy to adjust. That's just all there is to it. I'm out here taking a walk wearing my groove belt. It's kind of, the weather's kind of surprisingly nice here in Nevada. Hopefully the rest of the country catches up soon, but that's beside the point. I will say after about a week of wearing the groove belt, I have gotten used to it and it is definitely better than a traditional belt. Although I'm not sure I like it better than the ratchet belt I've been using for a couple years. I will say though, I've not had to adjust this once. I've sat down, stood up and in the car after meals, before meals. So it definitely doesn't seem like a belt you have to adjust very often, if at all. I will say it's very easy to take off and put back on. That, they do have that right. That's probably the easiest belt I've ever had as far as that goes. So if you've been looking for an alternate belt, especially if you haven't had luck with the ratchet belts, the groove belt might be a good choice for you. It might be a bit expensive, 50 bucks, but it, if it ends up being a great belt for you, it could be worth it. This is the Wonder Shelf. Let's open it up. I believe there are two shelves in the box. The Wonder Shelf, oh, one of them is $10. I saw two for 16 on Amazon. This is currently an Amazon's choice with a 4.5 star rating with 2000 ratings. I believe it was designed originally for a place to put your phone right above your toilet paper holder so you have somewhere to put it. But they say you can be used for a lot of other things as well. The only complaints I saw on Amazon were that some people prefer to use the removable command strips or some people even drilled holes in there. So the problem with this is this kind of mounting system will likely damage the, your, your paint, your drywall, your wallpaper. So I can see why some people might want to use command strips. I'm going to use this in the bathroom, but I'm also going to test it here so I can do some additional tests on it. Step one, determine the location for the installation. Use a standard level to make a removable mark. Clean the surface with rubbing alcohol. Allow it to dry completely. Remove the liners from the adhesive tapes. Align the shelf and press. Hold it for 30 seconds. All right, now I've got to wait one hour and then I can put something on here. Now let's head in the bathroom with shelf number two. Come back in one hour, give it a shot. Right, let's see what we got here. It feels pretty solid. I brought some uh, light reading material on my phone. Now, I'm not one to usually linger in the bathroom like some people do, but if you are a lingerer, maybe this would be good for you. Let's see. Okay. Hey, this feels pretty solid. It is not negatively affecting the toilet paper roll on my phone. Huh. Maybe it is a good idea. I wasn't really convinced at first, but I'm kind of thinking this is a pretty good idea. I'm not sure about the mounting technique. I, I'm not sure that was the best option, but let's go out to the living room and try that one and see if we can put it through a little more rigorous test. But so far, it's pretty good. All right, it's been two hours on this one. It feels sturdy. They say it can hold up to five pounds, so let's, uh, let's test that out. So each of these are one pound, so it's under half the recommended weight. I'm gonna let it sit there for couple days. If it holds that, then I'm convinced that it's going to be strong enough. So I'm going to come back in two days or until this falls, whichever one is first. I should point out that the reason I use this shelf in this location is because this is kind of an out of the way wall. I also put it not high off the ground in case it fell. It wouldn't make a loud sound in the middle of the night. But it looks like after two days it held up. It's still pretty sturdy. All right, so next up I wanted kind of a more extreme test on the shelf to see how it works when it actually fails because some people on Amazon said that the shelf failed for them and took off paint, drywall, wallpaper. Now I couldn't really get it to fail myself, which is a good thing, but what happens when you want to take the shelf off and what happens when it does fail? The wall I chose for that first shelf was for this reason because I don't care if that particular wall gets messed up. If I was going to take it off there, I'd probably use something like a putty knife and get behind there and try to minimize the damage. But sometimes when the shelf comes off or sometimes even when you try to remove it easily, it doesn't go so well. So, But here's what happened when I did my simulation of a failed wonder shelf. They don't recommend taking it off. I should point that out. This is not according to their instructions. You should not do this, but I just want to see. And the box even says it cannot be repositioned after you attach it to a surface. But we are taking it off. We're going to see what happens. Mmm. Wow, is that on there good? Oh, man, look at that. Oh, no. Good thing I picked a wall I'm going to be repairing soon. <laughs> just 
but a big look at this. Not good. I can see why people want to use command strips because uh, that's not good. But I can see why people like the winter shelf. It's simple, it works well. I still think the mounting system should be reconfigured or other options added, but I do think the winter shelf does have a lot to offer. It would be better if there was other options for mounting. This is the sleep band. It's a sleep mask with embedded Bluetooth speakers. Let's check it out. On the website currently it lists for 60 bucks and I saw it on sale for 40 when I checked on there. They also have a pro version which is 75 bucks or on sale for 45. It does have an included battery that they say lasts for three full nights. There is a port right there where you charge it up at. There is an included cable. I can feel there are a couple of speakers in there. This goes around your head when you sleep. Some controls that'll go, I guess, on your forehead. All the electronic components are removable so you can wash this. So it will be interesting to see how this actually works. So according to these instructions here, I just have to hold down the play button for four seconds and I'll see it on my phone and pair it that way. I hear something. I can't hear. I got to put it on and see what it's saying. Well, I can't even tell what button is which. I guess that's the play button. Uh, it's beeping. And it's not on my phone. All right. Oh, there it is. There it is. It says, it says connected. I got to turn the volume up, but I, I can barely feel the buttons. And they're not really touching my ears. Here's my ear and here's the speaker. If I put it on, is this backwards? Oh, that, that's not gonna work, the speakers are up here. Can I move the speakers? Oh, I got it, I got it over my ears. I got it over my ears. Oh, now it sounds good. But I'm gonna try this tonight and see how it works. Next stop, bedtime with the sleep band. All right, here we go. First use. Uh, let me see. Okay, there's the, there's the button to turn it on. Let me hit my phone here. How about some good sleep music? All right, I hear the music. It's a metal band from Puerto Rico. Very good band. This is a little bit in a bad place. Maybe I can adjust that. The speakers sound good. Let me see. Oh yeah, this is the best part. I actually hear music. My head is flying against the pillow and it's not uncomfortable. This is nice. All right, I think I might like this. If I can adjust this, I think I might like it. First night's sleep, here we go. All right, well, I've had my first night of sleep with the sleep band. And the reason I'm doing it outside, I'll get to a little bit later, but let me tell you my original pros and cons after one night of using it. I'm gonna keep using it. If I have any updates, I'll give it to you at the end. The first pro is that it's quite comfortable to lay on your side, listen to music. I didn't feel like the speaker was digging into my ear. The sound quality is actually very good. The bass is good. And the overall sleep band is quite comfortable. As far as my initial cons go, the first con seems to be gone today, which was that I, I have a rather large head, and I mean that literally, not figuratively, <laughs> but it seems like I couldn't get the speakers over my ears properly, but after one night, it seems like it may be stretched out, and now it fits over my ears perfectly. The biggest con, though, this control panel has is kind of a big square. And when you put it over your face as a sleep mask, it kind of digs right in your nose. So I really couldn't use it as a sleep mask. It did work quite well um, for the music, but as far as the mask goes, this thing was a bit uncomfortable. Now the reason I'm outside is because some people use this actually for exercise and listen to music. Like I said, the sound quality is very good. It's kind of funny you can control it with your fingers. You're walking down the street tapping buttons in your head. Can't use it with a hat though. That ain't gonna work. Control panel stops it. For those of us who are follically challenged, I kind of need a hat on top of my head or I'm gonna get a big circle on my head uh, as a sunburn. I'm not sure if you can wear sunglasses with it though. I guess you can. Eh. You know, most days I'm actually glad I don't have hair. It's kind of a pain. But a day like this, I kind of wish I had hair because I have to put this hat on. It looks ridiculous up there. But I can't pull it down because of the control panel. But my head was starting to get hot. I'm going to get a big halo up there if I don't do that. A good thing I don't really care what people think, but still, it looks, it looks pretty silly. I was also going to point out that I do like that you can control the, you can skip to the next track or the previous track, adjust the volume, pause, and play all from your forehead. It's pretty convenient. If you're just laying in bed trying to go to sleep, you don't have to pick it off and look at your phone. You can just do it right there. When you're walking, if your phone's in your pocket like it is for me, you don't have to take it out of there. That's convenient too. So I, I, I'm really, I, I kind of see the, the pluses and minuses of, of the sleep band. And I really feel like how you use it is going to dictate how happy you are with it. I'm going to keep using it. If anything changes, I will let you know at the end of this video.
One thing I've realized since my original test is that this, the speakers inside can be kind of moved around a little bit. You can actually move them, so maybe they, maybe they just weren't in the right position when I got them. The instructions didn't really make that clear that they could be adjusted. But I do want to try something that they show that you can do, and that's washing it. And I want to see how hard it is to get everything out and back in. They make it look really easy in the video. Let's see how easy it really is. All right, well, the, the module is loose now. The module is caught on something. All right, here we go. All right. Now we're supposed to gently pull the speakers out. Of course, why is it stuck on something for me, but not for them in their instructional video? And it's, it's stuck on something. It's like, it's like in a knot, come on. And I still, I still have one more in here too. I'm not sure if I have the patience for this. It is still stuck on something. All right, it took me about 10 minutes. I finally got it. Very frustrating. Let's go put this in the wash and then see how hard it is to get this back in there. All right, the sleep band is out of the wash and it came out no worse for wear. It doesn't seem like it shrunk or anything. So uh, sounds good. Now I gotta begrudgingly put this back in there. So I have to turn this inside out. So that means I gotta put it through this opening. Yesterday was difficult. It was my first time, so maybe just to, maybe it's just something you gotta get used to, right? All right, hey, that went in pretty easily. All right. So this speaker goes in here. Putting it back in wasn't so bad at all, let me see. And we are good to go. So after using it for a week, I'll say the battery lasts for a long time on the sleep band, and I actually realized that you can adjust the speakers, which actually not only helped the placement around my ears, but I was able to get it in the configuration where the module doesn't dig on my nose as much. So once I got all that dialed in, I actually like the sleep band quite a bit. If you're looking for a Bluetooth sleep mask, I would say the sleep band could be a good option to consider. Well, that's it. I would say of these four, the sleep band is probably the one I'm going to keep using. The other three I'm not too sure about, but we'll have to see how it goes over the next year before my update of this video. If you've used any of these products, tell us what you think in the comments below. I appreciate you watching and I'll see you next time.